Hello, hello, and welcome to the Unit 5 CA, sorry, Unit 5 Test Part 1 Review. All right. Dax pays $65 plus 35 cents for each minute over 450 for his cell phone plan. Monica pl pays $54.99 plus 20 cents for each minute over 450. Which system of equations represent this situation? Let's have X represent the number of minutes over 450. Now in multiple choice questions, what I do is I look for the right answer for the first part. So what I'm gonna find here is where does, uh, Where's Dax's equation correct? Okay, so first thing I have here is 65.99. So I'm going to highlight everything that has a 65.99. Now what I need to decide here is, does that 65.99 change at all for every minute? No, 65.99 is just 65.99. There should be no letters next to it. So that helps us eliminate letter A and B, because both of them have X's next to it. Okay. The next word for DAX is plus, which unfortunately doesn't really help us pick between C and D, because they both have pluses. The next part is 35 cents each minute, and we have X representing each minute. So we should have 35, 0.35 X. So let's find it. It exists in letter C. Number two. Pauline spends $260 for internet and $11 per month for an HBO Max subscription. Svetlana pays $240 for internet and pays $9 per month for Netflix. Which system of equation represents this situation? So, like the previous problem, let's look at Pauline's situation first. So, Pauline spends $260 for internet. So, I'm going to check every equation and make sure it has a two, or each system. Each system has a $260. Okay, fine. Um, now, 260 is a one-time thing. I don't have a per month thing here. So, Pauline spends 260 once. There should be no variables next to it, which means I can cross off letter A and letter B again because they both have little X's, okay? Next, we have and, which is a plus. Unfortunately, they both have a plus. Then I have, uh, for Pauline, $11 per month. So, I should have 11 X. There we go. That's letter D. Number three, how many solutions does each system have? Now, unfortunately, these systems are set up not in a, like an easy way for us to look and tell. So I'm just going to go ahead and start solving it. Now, the way I would approach this is, well, I feel like getting rid of the Y's because they look a little easier because they're smaller numbers. I have a negative 1y and a positive 3. To make them eliminate, I'm going to multiply the top equation by 3. That way, we'll have a negative 3y and a positive. So this is what it ends up being. 3 times 3x, 9x. 3 times negative y, negative 3y. And 3 times 1, 3. The bottom equation, I'm just going to rewrite and keep it the same because we didn't need to change anything in order to get rid of those y's. So check it out. The y's are now negative 3, positive 3, which means they cancel. So let's go ahead and add them. Okay. Negative 9x's and 9x's, shoot, they cancel too. Well, if there's nothing left on the left side, I'm going to use 0 to represent it. 3 plus negative 1 is 2. So I got something that's 0 equals 2. Does 0 equal 2? Absolutely not. There's no solution here. I'm going to do the same thing for letter B. Uh, it looks like the y's are going to be easier to get rid of as well. Um, I have, once again, whoops, a negative y and a positive 3y. So just like in the last problem, I'm going to multiply this equation by 3. And then the y's should be able to cancel. So that gives us 18x minus 3y equals 3. The bottom equation, I'm going to keep exactly the same because we already have a positive 3y. So if you check it out, these cancel wonderful. Let's do some adding. Negative 18 and 18 
they cancel too. Okay, so nothing left on the left. That's zero. Three and negative three. Holy cannoli, that's also zero. So my question to you, does zero equal zero? Sure does. We have an infinite. Oops. In, why aren't we writing? Infinite. Infinite number of solutions. Or, of course, you can draw an infinity symbol. I cannot draw it um, sideways. So... Or not sideways. Okay, let me turn my tablet, and then we can see what it actually looks like. There we go. That's how infinity should look like. I'm not too good at drawing it when I don't turn my paper. Okay, onwards we go. Number four asks us to solve this by substitution. So one of our equations, x and y are on the same side. The other one is the y equals. That tells me that I'm going to take this y equals and substitute into the top equation. So, instead of 3x plus y, I'm going to have 3x plus 5x minus 19 equals 5. Now, I do technically have an invisible 1 in front of these parentheses, so I'm kind of going to distribute that. 1 times 5x is 5x. 1 times negative 19 is negative 19 equals 5. Next, let's combine some like terms. Do you see the like terms that we can combine? I'm going to combine the x's. 3x's plus 5x's give us 8x's. So now I have 8x minus 19 equals 5. All right, what do you think we should do next? Let's add 19 to both sides. If, oh, there we go. My computer is being sensitive today. Oh, I think I'm, t you know what? It's my bracelets. Let me take my bracelets off. There we go. Okay. So, on the left-hand side, just 8x remains because 19 and negative 19 cancel. 5 plus 19 is 24. And let's finish by doing what? Dividing. X equals 3. Wondrous. Now that we found X, we need to find Y as well. And I'm going to use this handy Y equals equation. So I found that X equals 3. So instead of 5X minus 19, I'm going to have 5 times 3 minus 19. Okay. 5 times 3 is 15. And 15 minus 19 is negative 4. And don't forget to write your answer in coordinate form. X comma Y, 3 comma negative 4. Let's do that one more time. In this system, once again, I have just one Y equals equation, which means I'm plugging it into Y. So instead of 2X minus Y equals 2, I'm going to have 2X minus... In parentheses, negative 2x plus 6 equals 2. Now, in front of those parentheses, I technically have a negative 1, so let's distribute it. Negative 1 times negative 2x is positive 2x. Negative 1 times positive 6 is negative 6, and it still all equals 2. Let's combine some like terms. 2x plus 2x, 4x minus 6 equals 2. What do you think we should do next? Let's add 6 to both sides. So now we have 4x equals 8. And what's our famous last step? Divide by 4. X equals 2. Now that we have an X equals 2, let's plug it into our Y equals equation. Y equals negative 2 times 2 plus 6. Which means Y equals negative 4 plus 6. Y equals 2. So our final answer, 2 comma 2. X comma y. All right, let's continue. 
Let's solve this problem using linear combination slash elimination. Now the way I'm picking if I'm going to eliminate x's or y's is the first thing I check is if there's a positive and negative. It looks like that's what our y's have, a positive and negative. Okay, so the easiest thing to do here is to multiply the whole top equation by the bottom number by 9 and the whole bottom equation by 6. Now, if you know the common multiple between 9 and 6 is 18, you could have multiplied it by different numbers, but we're just going to pretend we don't know that, or we're having some test anxiety, and we'll use the surefire way of doing it. Okay, so everything gets multiplied by 9. Third, 3 times 9, 27x. 6 times 9, 54y. Equals 33 times 9, 297. 6 times 6, 36x minus 54y equals negative 108. And now we can go ahead and add them because we made our y's opposite. Okay, so the y's are gone. Idea. 27 plus 36 is 63 x's. 297 plus negative 108 is 189. And we finish by dividing both sides by 63. x equals 3. Now that you found that x equals 3, it does not matter which equation, as long as we use an original one, we use to solve for y. Um, I feel like using the top equation, you might be doing a different one. I encourage you to try a different one. Okay, instead of 3x plus 6y, I'm going to have 3 times 3 plus 6y equals 33, because I found what x is. 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, what do you think we should do next? Let's subtract 9 from both sides. 6y equals 24. And what do we do to finish? Divide by 6. y equals 4. So our final answer, 3 comma 4, x comma y. Let's do another linear combination. Okay. Ooh, okay, all right. In this one, it really doesn't matter which we use, x's or y's. So how am I going to pick? Now, when both x's and y's are negative and positives, I look for the smaller numbers. And to me, it looks like the y's have smaller numbers, a 1 and a 6. So what I'm going to do is multiply the top equation by 6. That's all I got to do here. Because we already have a 6y, we need another 6y up top. All right, let's multiply by 6. Negative 4x times 6 is negative 24x. 6 times y is 6y. 17 times 6 is 102. And we're going to keep the bottom equation exactly as is. And hopefully you can see why I'm doing that. The y's will cancel. Now if you were doing the x's, I would multiply the top by 5, the bottom by 4 you'll still get the same answer. All right, negative 24x's plus 5x's is negative 19x. I forgot to cross these off. 102 plus negative 7 is 95. And let's finish both sides, or let's finish finding x by dividing on both sides by negative 19. x equals negative 5. Like I said in the previous problem, it doesn't matter which one we plug it into. I feel like plugging it into the top because y is by itself. So instead of negative 4x, I'm going to have negative 4 times negative 5 plus y equals 17. Again, you could have picked the bottom equation. You'll get the same answer. Negative 4 times negative 5 is 20. And then let's finish this up by subtracting 20 from both sides. y equals negative 3. 
So our final answer, negative 5, negative 3, x, comma, y. Okay, let's do one more. Number 8. Given each system of equations, choose which method you would use to solve it and why. Okay, so let's begin with letter A. Letter A should be, or I'm going to let you think. What do you think it should be? Then I'll tell you. I think it should be linear combination because both equations are in ax plus by equals c form. In other words, this is the only set of equations that have x and y on both sides. So, x and y on same side for both. That's just another way of thinking about it. All right. How about letter B? What do you think we could use to solve this? Substitution or graphing? I'm going to go with substitution. Because one of the equations is in y equals form. Now we go this for the same if you had an x equals. So for substitution, we need at least one of the equations to be a y equals or an x equals. So what could letter C be? For letter C, I'm going to choose graphing because both equal, eek, come on, right pencil, there we go, equations are in, come on, buddy, I know you can sense it, there we go, y equals form. So I know we did substitution when they're both y equals, but I think that when they're both y equals, the best option is to graph them. The best option for substitution is if one of them is y equals or x equals. And if they're not, neither of them are x equals or y equals, that's when linear combination is, in, um, is required. Now, I wouldn't graph if letter C was both x equals. If they were both x equals, that's a sign to use substitution. So I know it's kind of funky, but graphing is when both are y equals. Substitution is when one of them is y equals or x equals. And linear combination is when neither of them have a y or x equals. They're both um, on the same side. All right. If you have any questions, please let us know. By us, I mean me, myself, and I, or your teachers, or whoever you are asking to help with your review. Have a wonderful rest of whatever day it is for you. Um, bye!